They called for certain improvements, and they requested that the other lo uh, surrounding localities add this fee uh, to offset the cost of those improvements. The Chesterfield, Henrico, and Hanover have already made these changes in their code, and so the city is the uh, uh, last outstanding jurisdiction to not have done so at this time. Uh, so this is what prompted the uh, drafting of this legislation. And how much is that be uh, What it would be is for all trips that originate at the airport, it would be an additional, for all trips that originate at the Richmond International Airport, there would be an additional $2 fee. So that's only the ones that are there at the airport, right? Correct. But I know that um, at the airport they have their own cab companies that are there? What about if an outsider, um, like say Veterans Cab, was to come in there? Would they? Well, it, it has to do with where the cab company is licensed. So all cab companies licensed in Richmond, that's what this legislation would uh, pertain to. But Chesterfield and Rico and Hanover have already made this code change. So anybody that is licensed in those jurisdictions as well, uh, they will have that same fee. So it would be a flat rate of $10 if the meter wouldn't get you up to 10. And then if it's over 10, obviously it would be the meter rate and the additional $2 charge.
further questions from the committee? Hearing none, is there anyone from the public who would like to speak in favor or in opposition to this? <coughs> I'm a citizen of Richmond, Virginia. I would like to speak in opposition to this paper. Uh, if, if the fellow from the city attorney's office could uh, clarify, uh, do the other localities also have the $10 minimum charge? I don't know. See, that's, that's the basis of my opposition. I'm not opposed to the $2 surcharge for airport fares, but I am opposed to a minimal uh, $10 charge. You know, what if someone's getting a ride from the airport to Verina? I think, um, I think uh, visitors to our city or residents who live here should only be charged the fair market rate that the meter reflects with the additional $2 charge, which I'm fine with. I'm opposed to this $10 minimal charge. That's, that's my only opposition. Thank you. So, Luke, you said you do not know if this round comes or have you Chesterfield. Can Rico has the additional $10? Charge is uh, their language is exactly how it's uh, drafted in the ordinance that's before you, and <coughs> and Hanover as well. charge plus the uh, ten, the two dollars so it's a charge on the meter or ten dollars whichever is greater plus the, plus the additional two dollars and that's in Rico and Hanover so I thought you also had mentioned Chester <laughs> Chester Field Their language does not have the minimum $10. It is the charge on the meter plus the $2 in Chesterfield. And I was checking to see if there was, if I was reading it all correctly because the codes are arranged a little bit differently. charge on the meter plus two dollars. And so why did we not, did, or did we look at uh, that scenario versus the one that's articulated here? Uh, the, the recommendation from the airport commission was as, as such as it's stated as we proposed it. Also looking at Henrico and Hanover, they also have that. So I don't have the information on Chesterfield to know what their delineation is, and so I would need to take a look and make sure that that's not listed some other place in their code. But, and, and I would, if I may, I would also add that part of the reason is in a lot of other localities, they have uh, for lack of a better word, a gateway fee. So all trips that start at an airport have a flat rate, for uh, especially in larger cities. And so that was part of it. And so that is what the $10 does. It's a flat rate uh, guarantee for a trip that you at least register $10. And that's comparable to other uh, localities across the country. We're, we're going 
to um, move on to the next paper and come back to this one okay. paper later. We're waiting for someone to arrive from the airport. Um, now we'll move on to item number two, which is ordinance number 2013-3, to authorize the CAO to accept $50,000 from the Virginia Department of Emergency Management and to appropriate an increase to fiscal year 2013-20 to fiscal year 2013 special fund budget uh, for the Department of Fire and Emergency Services for the purpose of Richmond MSA Public Outreach and Education Project. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Madam Chair. Can you all hear me? Good afternoon, Madam Chair. Good afternoon. Many members, um, in essence, what this paper will do is um, will allow the Office of Emergency Management to, to continue a comprehensive outreach program in terms of emergency preparedness for the whole community. And that outreach program is called Survivor Day. It's something that, that was developed here in the city and the Urban Area Security Initiative um, has brought into the concept as well. And what this, what this training will essentially do for our citizens is that we will provide our citizens with four hours of training and provide each household with an uh, emergency preparedness kit for a family of two, just with the basic um, essentials. And currently, we have 10 localities um, within the region who will, be t who will be participating on this particular day, and I'll give you this date as well. Um, and as I already mentioned, there, there is a four-hour training block that the citizens must, must attend in order to receive this kit. Um, what the $50,000 will do is purchase additional kits for upcoming training sessions. And one of the concerns that we have is that we know for a fact that the funds that we use for survivor days are going away. Uh, the grant is just, the grant has disappeared. So what we want to do is we want to make sure that we have enough kits for future training sessions for the entire region. The kit itself contains um, working gloves, flashlight with batteries, um, pocket radio, one of the things we found that was key for us during our reign was to make sure that our citizens have a radio so they can get current information. Um, first aid kit is also included in that, in that kit to include um, duct tape, ponchos, um, plastic drop cards, whistles, <coughs> and other essential items to include a uh, one, gallon, um, one gallon container for, 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 for water. So with that said, uh, we do have a, a, a good product that's working, and I'm going to give you some numbers just to illustrate how, how well we think this product is. January of last year, when we actually started doing Survivor Day again, we had more than 1,200 citizens sign up for it regionally, more than 1,200 citizens. We had over 900 citizens actually attend this training session regionally, over 900. The second session that we had was in May. Now, following that January session, we had more than 500 citizens actually register for the next training session that didn't have a date associated with it. So once we identified a date, we had more than 1,600 people actually register for the May session of 2012. More than 1,200 citizens actually attended the session regionally. Now, at the conclusion of the May session, we had more than 700 citizens pre-registered to attend another session without a date. More than 700 citizens registered to attend this training session. So that will be this particular training session coming up here in February. The particular date right now is February 23rd, which is a Saturday, and <coughs> 10 localities that will be conducting this training session are as, are as follows. Charles City County, Chesterfield County, City of Colonial Heights, Dinwiddie County, Goochland County, Hanover County, Henrico County, City of Hopewell, Louisa County, City of Petersburg, and the City of Richmond. We will simultaneously <coughs> provide this training at one time so that if a citizen can't get to a, a training session in their locality, they can go to the next locality and get this training session. I'll take any questions right now. Any questions from the committee? None. Is there anyone from the public who would like to speak in favor or in opposition to this paper? I 
go see this man chair. We will be at, start advertising for this training session the first or the second week of February. Can I bring that to the meeting? operations center is a critical information system. How we pass information along to the state is that we pick up the phone. Well, we want to make sure that we can provide this information via computer um, within, this, within our city, within our city, to the state and to other localities. Um, the system that we're looking at is compatible to what the state is using and what the other localities are using. We want to make sure that we have this in the city. Currently, we have one position, which is, which is ESF-5, which is emergency management, has the capability of um, logging into the system from one position. What this is going to do, it's going to allow us to have all 17 support functions in the EOC to be able to, 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 be able to log into the system, to be able to send critical information to the state to, and to our other localities. This paper will allow us to do that in the Emergency Operations Center. In addition to that particular um, um, project or particular um, system, we're also looking at a system that will allow our citizens to actually sign up to receive alerts via their mobile devices within the city. And that will also be included in this paper as well. Any questions from the committee? Is there anyone in the public who would like to speak in favor or in the opposition of this paper? Hearing none, I'll bring it back to the committee. So motions. done for a few years ago is where people, uh, uh, cab operators sit in line half a day 
and then go across the street, I mean, deliver someone literally across the street. So the $10 really, uh, the circumference is really uh, affects only Henrico County from the airport because that $10 is within Henrico County. Does that make sense? I mean, you can't, to do leave uh, the airport and go outside Henrico County would be greater than $10 by meter. And what we, were, what we did with that a few years ago was minimum charge from the airport is $10, and that would still only take you within Henrico County. The $2 is new to be added so the uh, cab operators can uh, retrieve their $2 fee that the airport assesses. I think I understand what your question is. I don't think Chesterfield adopted the ten dollars. It doesn't affect them at all. That's that's what I, I understand. What I'm here today is just the uh, I guess two words plus two dollars added to that clause. So everything remains the same for all the jurisdictions. The only thing is the two dollars. Is that what you're saying? No, I I think. The $10 element that's in Henrico is unique to Henrico because it does not affect anybody else. Excuse me? As I understand, this is my name. Your item would be paying a base of $10 for more than $10 that the meter is telling you, plus a $2 surcharge that is essentially for our taxi cab drivers to recuperate a fee that the airport is already charging. So essentially what I'm understanding is the city limits, all parts of the city limits, are further than what would be metered at $10. Therefore, really the $10 doesn't affect us. Um, and what we're really doing is trying to pass an ordinance so that our taxi cab drivers can recover the two dollars that they're being assessed as a fee. Yes. Speak up, please.
Is there anyone else who would like to speak in opposition or in support? <coughs> Because if you are at the airport and you are selecting a cab and you're not from uh, the area, you're not necessarily knowing where the licensing of the cab company is. So for consistency purposes, that is where we selected to go with the charges for RICO and handover. Because the minimum is, it's still not a, a given. Because if the, obviously if the meter is over that amount, then you pay the meter. So and I don't have the background on the discussion, um, and I will go back and look at Chesterfield in terms of why there is that uh, deviation for where there is a $10 minimum. And I also want to be clear that I didn't miss it in their, their code. It wasn't somewhere else and just not on the same, the same line. So I will go back and, and take a look at that and be certain of that. Um, and if you're going to be going back and looking at this, it sounds like you may be continuing the paper if, if you're opening up that door. Um, if you do open up that door, would the administration consider it? Um, not imposing the $10 minimum if it doesn't even apply to the city of Richmond? I don't know. There was no reason. It doesn't affect them. Uh, but it, uh, there's no reason that I'm aware of why. It doesn't change fares from anywhere other than within uh, pretty much the hotel range around the airport, the immediate <coughs> around the airport. If I may. No, the $10 uh, minimum was put in couple years ago. The two dollar are the two dollar fee to reimbursement is new. And it's basically a two word add to the other jurisdictions. Okay, so yes. again, as I thought I asked before, maybe I just missed it. So the only thing that's new in this scenario is the two dollar fee. Everything is as was with the localities except this two dollar fee. For the other localities the ten dollars may have already existed, and I'll check with Luke if I'm correct. But in our code, was the ten dollar minimum in existence prior to this paper? No, it was not. But perhaps for the other localities, that ten dollars was already there. So their only change that was recent is the addition of two dollars. But that's only to Rico and Hanover. Correct. That's not Chesterfield. Correct. And that's what we're trying to find. Why not Chesterfield, too? We don't have the answer to that, Madam Chair. If I may, it's, it sounds, and this is pretty clear coming um, from the panel here, Chesterfield doesn't have the $10 because it doesn't apply. What I'm also hearing is that really it doesn't apply to the city of Richmond. So the question that should be posed is if it doesn't apply to the city of Richmond, then why are we including it here if it, it's not applicable? We're, we're putting in a law that's not even applicable. So if the idea is to simplify things, it may be recommended 
to simply go with the $2 surcharge, which is the newest element in the equation. And that's where I'm, I'm asking if, if the administration is, is willing to look at that. Okay. We're, 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 open to, we're open to that. And so is it the pleasure of the committee to remove the $10 language of the $10 minimum and just add the additional $2 charge? If, if I may, I just want to also be clear that because of the argument of where people are licensed, this would be simply a fee if they were delivered into the city of Richmond. It's not going to affect Richmond licensed taxi, taxi drivers who are dropping off in Henrico County. It's no. only for trips at the airport that originate at the airport. If a Richmond taxi cab operator picked up from the airport, and delivered a passenger to the double tree across the street, it'd be a minimum of $10. Thank you. Is Well, for the, if we can take a look at why Chesterville didn't have, doesn't have that language uh, about a $10 minimum. And if it is the pleasure of the committee, the goal here was to ensure that not only uniformity, but that the $2, which was the additional uh, charge that we were trying to achieve, that we could remove the $10 and just have the $2 charge. That'd be perfectly acceptable to us also. So I was going to ask if there was anybody from the cab companies here today. Uh, no, but they're very supportive of it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's always nice to have people come here to speak on a paper. You know what I'm saying? Yes. And, and I, I know that the city attorney mentioned something about the uniformity of the code. And I can't speak, obviously, for Chesterfield County, but I just want to make sure that if we did do away with the $10 minimum, we would be still keeping in any type of regulation we have for the uniformity, uh, because that is, I, it is, the way we have it drafted right now is identical to Hanover and Henrico. So we would still be, if we remove the $10 minimum, we would still be okay with any uniformity issues. Mr. Angelesi makes a good point. Because the $10 fee would not affect the city, since any fare originating is at the airport is going to be more than three and a half miles, three and a fifth miles, and therefore more than $10 from the airport. However, for purposes of reciprocity, and so that there are no questions among the jurisdictions or the cab companies, it may be a good idea to have the ordinances as simple as possible. So to, to leave as is? I would, yes. <clears throat> Otherwise, there is a very good chance that there will be one cab company looking at one ordinance versus another ordinance versus a fare only in Henrico looking at a Richmond ordinance, etc. I'm going to try to unbundle this a little bit. The two dollars we are all concrete with this payment. Okay. The ten dollars, it, it's it's. Uh, is really more of a question for the city of Richmond relative to the other localities and what is articulated for Chesterfield especially. I mean, if, if we can unbundle this, the two dollars we, I don't think we have any, that's consistent, that's across the board, that's everybody. Um, the ten dollars may be appropriate, but I would want to have that uh, discussion a little more thoroughly in terms of the, uh, this is a regional effort and, and it's a great airport. Okay, but we all get to share of this and being equitable in terms of sharing the expense, of et cetera, et cetera. So I'm fine on the two dollars. I'd like to have us admit that this or take a look or if we want to continue to come back and have more discussion about the ten dollars. I'm not saying it would be off the table, but I want to have a little more discussion. I don't want to hold up the two dollars because that's across the board for all of the jurisdictions. So, are we want to pay the ten dollars? 
Well, I think with, I mean, in reference to the $10, we are saying, I think, if I'm understanding correctly, two things. Number one, it won't apply because all trips would originate at the airport would be greater than. And what the city attorney office is saying is that for uniformity purposes, it would be better if all of the localities had identical language. And Which they don't at this point. Correct. Um, but however, I can't speak for Chesterfield as to why they don't have that portion. So that is, I could try to figure out what, why they don't have that. But I don't know if that still changes uh, the city attorney's point of the uniformity. I might try to move this conversation off um, from where we are because it's taking some time. Uh, it doesn't apply to the city of Richmond. We know that. Is it bad to include it for the city of Richmond? It doesn't apply. What I'm hearing from our attorney is put it in there because that might be better for the city of Richmond for a coherent message to all the taxi cabs out there so that they understand what the rules and regulations are across the region. For the reasons that it does not apply to Chesterfield, which does not apply to Richmond, and you know, I'm going to defer to our attorney on this one, I think, um, and I'd like to make a, a motion to move it forward with recommendation to full council. Uh, I would recommend to approve it so that we don't have to wait another 30 days for our taxi cab drivers to collect the $2 fee that they're already being charged. Let me try the $10. <laughs> uh, there's no reason that I'm aware of, and I've been through this with all the jurisdictions, why any of the, can't, uh, why Chesterfield doesn't have it in there, other than somehow it got lost in the, in the loop one, because I started with Enrico, because it really affected Enrico in the immediate hotel. So operators were concerned that they're, again, we're standing in line a number of hours and just taking a two, $2 fare across the street at a hotel that has a shuttle. So, to speak. so we came up with a minimum rate of $10, and that really goes to right around the airport from the new mall area to the hotel areas. Um, if I, uh, I, putting it in, I don't believe, and the council certainly can chime in, would hurt anything, anybody in the city of Richmond or taxi cab operators licensed in the city of Richmond. It would give them the privilege, though, if they're in line, pick up a fare and they get uh, have to take the person to like the Double Tree or to the mall or, uh, over on Laburnum, they would be able to charge them the ten dollars by not having it in wood. And I have no problems going back to Chesterfield and getting that put in. I, don't, I know I'm pretty confident that would not be an issue. I think it just somehow was overlooked. Okay, we have a motion on the board. <coughs> Accept the paper as presented. Is there a second? With recommendation to move it forward? Yes. <coughs> There's a second? Yes. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The paper is approved to move forward to the City Council. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
the nature of the city being an older city and our roads being rather narrow. Um, people have had some safety concerns about uh, the variance between how people are parking their cars parallel uh, to the curb. Uh, the Virginia driver's manual, and I'll just quote here, says that vehicles may not be parked more than one foot from the curb. That's in the Virginia driver's manual. But there's nothing in the Code of Virginia that says this. And local jurisdictions have the authority to write our own ordinances. And many municipalities <coughs> in the state have ordinances uh, to reinforce what the Virginia driver's manual recommends, which is a 12 inch to the curb. I'll just list a few of them, the city of Williamsburg, Newport News, Hamilton, Roanoke, Norfolk. Norfolk's actually six inches, uh, city of Fairfax. And what I am recommending is that we implement a similar ordinance to uh, give our law enforcement officers a little bit more definition when it comes to enforcing how automobiles are parked in the city. Uh, currently, they don't have any clear definition other than the discretion that it is, it is uh, obstructing uh, the flow of traffic that they can then issue a citation or have their automobile towed. We're trying to provide a little bit more clarity there. It's also a safety concern. Uh, there's a bill introduced to the General Assembly on dooring. Um, one of the things that has happened in the city is an increase in the Viking uh, community. And we want to make sure that automobiles are parked as close to the curb to offer our traveling the widest width so that our cyclists and our automobile drivers can navigate the roads safely. Um, I've got some photos I'm happy to share with you of instances where uh, people have parked more or less at a diagonal um, and not necessarily been parking parallel. Uh, I'm happy to share those with anybody that would like to see them. Uh, the other argument to support this paper, and this goes um, to the parking issues that we have in many of our neighborhoods, uh, when cars are parked at, at different variables, uh, if they're not all in a uniform plane, it makes it more difficult for cars to parallel park. Uh, your turning radius is going to be required a longer turning radius in order to skirt the vehicle that is parked four feet from the uh, so this is going to help to increase our parking capacity, I believe. Um, the last portion of this, I think, is education. And it's very important for people in the city to understand how our roads are marked and what they designate. Currently, uh, there are a number of uh, single white lane uh, lines that designate travel lane. Uh, that is often confused as a parking lane or as a bike lane. And it simply defines the travel lane. So uh, I'm hoping that this committee will recommend the paper as it is um, with approval, but I do understand that there's some consideration for streets that do not have curbs, uh, and if we need to clarify for uh, law enforcement what to do when there is no curb on the street, I would be happy to amend the paper. Okay, questions from the committee? Hearing none, is there anyone from the public who would like to speak in favor and in opposition of this paper? My name is Silver Persinger. Uh, I haven't really had much of a chance to look at the paper. Uh, Madam Chair, may I ask Mr. Agilesto if the proposed fine is $40? The proposed fine, as I understand it, is $20. Okay, I withdraw my opposition. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to speak in favor or in opposition of this paper? Can we not bring the paper back to the committee?
think it's very clear in what Mr. Angela said has and staff have articulated when you have a curb, you literally can determine uh, the proximity of the tire to it. If you don't have a curb, and we have some instances where we do not, uh, then if that's going to be our law enforcement officer's discretion or just to stipulate that so it's not solid. Okay, so the motion is to move the paper forward with certain stipulations if there is no curb. Is there a second? I will second this. Uh, and do we need, this is a point of clarification if I may, uh, will this paper need to be reintroduced to this committee with the amendment? Or can we introduce the amendment wording at this time? Okay, it sounds like there's a motion to move the paper forward with an amendment. Okay, so we have a motion to move the paper forward with an amendment to clarify some of the issues. And it's been second. All in favor? Opposed? Okay, the paper has been approved. Madam Chair, I believe that's all of the papers. We have um, Victoria. She has She's going to have to ask her to the papers. I told her she oh, Okay. Thank you, Madam Chair, for agreeing to hear this paper on this evening, the Public Safety Committee. This is an annual paper. It's the Aviation Agreement. It's a joint paper between Chesterfield and Henrico. We are expediting it and having it heard tonight because next month, due to the holiday, public safety falls after both of the City Council meetings, and we will need to issue payment on this paper. Um, the Aviation Agreement stipulates the amount that has already been allotted to this contract, the same amount as last year and the year before that. We've cited the previous papers, again, it's an annual ordinance that just allows us to enter into a shared agreement where we share airplanes and a helicopter with the adjoining jurisdictions. It's a cost savings to everyone, and we just wanted it to have an opportunity to be heard since we are going to expedite and entertain any questions that there may be. The only difference in this agreement from previous years is in the past it has expressly stated the dollar amount. This one instead refers to the amount shall not exceed the amount that has been allotted by each jurisdiction. Therefore, it can't exceed what we have already put in the budget and has already been accepted by council, the expenditures. And it does not have a set expiration date, whereas all of the previous had an annual expiration date. City. This was already put in the budget. The money has been here since July 1st. So this money is already sitting. We just need to have the paper adopted before we start sending the funds to him right there to cover our share of costs. Partnership and um, just the 
this is just another example of what our chief has done. Now we're in the city of Richmond, are working with others in the surrounding counties. I think it was even reported in the Times Dispatch Sunday. Thank <laughs> you. 